Right then, hello and welcome back to TNN Motorsports Hardcore TR. What does a TR stand for? Testicular repositioning. Hmm, indeed. Right, we're going to move on to the next season then. It is the Hot Rod Amateur Division. And like the 4x4 Amateur, we only have the three trucks to choose from. We have uh, El Gato. We have Iceberg, and of course we have Wildside. We're not going to be using Wildside because that truck is just bloody awful in every way imaginable. So we're going to stick with Iceberg for this one. Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, lovely bread van that we were given in the uh, secondary class. But anyway, track number one for this one. Only five races, of course, for uh, the amateur division. And Washington State is first up with track number one, or stage one, whichever you prefer. I like calling these stages because they, they look more like rally stages than proper race tracks, but again, that's just me. So, uh, yeah, here we go then. Race at number one, and away we go. I do believe we have the monster truck to contend with on this one, or it could be the... Oh, lovely. And again, you tap one of the trucks and you go for a spin because it is incredibly fair. Yes. Um, now, this stage was the one that caused me problems last time when we were here. Of course, this is the China stages from NPR. You get past Wild Side. That would help. And this awful bloody thing. Oh, there's the monster truck. Is that the monster truck or is that the other pickup? Can't see from back here. All the trucks look the same at a certain distance. No, that's just a normal truck, so that's fine. No monster truck in this championship, then. There's a bread van, of course. Oh. Again, with these sensitive controls. Now, at least you can hear the truck a little bit better in comparison to... Oops. Uh, to previously, when the music was way too loud. I haven't changed any of the settings either, it's just... I guess each truck has its own volume metric. I'm not sure. And as I mentioned previously as well, these races are, of course, three laps instead of the usual two, so... It'll be a little bit of an elongated video. But you can see how easy it is already. I mean, we're pulling away 0.2 of a mile. We would be pulling away a lot more if we didn't keep going into the bloody walls. Of course, coming to the end of the series now, this is the penultimate episode of TNN Motorsports, which can't come soon enough, to be honest. I'm, uh, you know, after playing through Max Power Racing and then playing through this one, and the only real difference is the scenery in some of the stages and uh, the trucks. Of course, uh, you know, it's, nothing's changed. So uh, the monotony is starting to creep in just a little bit. Half a mile ahead of second place. Oh my word. See, this is what I mean about the floaty physics. You try and move or try and steer. And it is literally like you're just floating. You have no control at all. One of the main features in New Technics games, you've got to get used to it. See, look at that, we're pulling away now, 0.7 of a mile. Should be able to make a mile uh, by the end of the lap. 
already up to 0.9. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to over a mile way before the end of the race, so... This bodes well for the rest of the <laughs> rest of the championship. We go in for a little bit of a dunk in the water again. Okay, we won't... Oh, I don't know. We might make it to a mile, but after going in the drink, probably not. Especially not if we're going to keep wobbling around on the grass embankment. Nope, not a mile, but very close to it anyway. We got to point nine. And we roll the car at the end. Fan bloody tastic. Right, let's get us uh, a good enough thumbnail then for this series if the camera didn't keep going on this one. Hate this camera view, and you can't really. I don't think you can change the view either. You have to wait and wait and wait. Oh, that's a semi decent ish view. What are the other trucks really in, in shot? Like an action shot, so to speak. No, and again, it goes back to this bloody side on view. Stupid game, and it's stupid bloody camera angles. No, oh, I'll, you know, I'll have to make a, a thumbnail of what I got there, but... Oh, this game, I'll tell you that much. Just a right pain in the backside. Four races remaining, we get the ten points for the victory. And we'll go straight on to the next race, which is, of course, New Mexico track number one. Which is great. And what stages were these? Was this the US stages in Max Power? Yes, it was. Okay, cool. So again, this is going to be a very simple race. And away we go. I'm sure this, this entire game you have like three music tracks throughout the entire soundtrack. See, what I usually used to do was just turn the music off completely. Because, I don't know, um, for me personally, I don't like music in racing games. I prefer just listening to the engine, because then you, you get a bit of grasp if you're using a manual transmission uh, of your revs and changing gear and this and the other. But when you got the music on, it becomes more of a distraction than anything. On arcade racers like this, it's absolutely fine. You know, you don't have to worry about it. But when it comes to... Oh, oh just avoided the war. Uh, oh, we're going to roll anyway because of the bloody physics. Bye. Um, but yeah, when sims are involved, then yeah, I have the... You know, it's, it's ideal to have the music off. But it, it's just down to preference, really. Uh, the music on this game is very boring. Like I say, it, only, it feels like there's only three tracks in the entire soundtrack. Right, lap one complete. I've got a huge lead on this one. Truck's looking a bit out of it now, though. That's a dent in the roof. I think all the windows are shattered. Wait, right, the front one. Yeah, the front one is definitely shattered, so is the rear and the sides. Curious, actually, to see how deformed these trucks get. Or if there's a certain point where it just stops. Not sure. Ooh. Good, didn't go in the water. See, we're not pulling away as quickly this time. Still only 0.3 of a mile. 0.2 now. Oh, come on. There we go. I 
I'm curious, that looks like a shortcut. If you go, as soon as you hit the tarmac section, on the left hand side there's like a, a little ridge. And it looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a train um, tunnel. I'll have to uh, check that out in my own time whether that is a, a little shortcut or not because some of these tracks do have shortcuts um, you just have to find them so I'm curious now whether that is a, a shortcut or not or maybe I'm just going completely insane no don't spin come on there we go Well, I know, over we go again, goodbye, into the drink. See, usually it would make me nervous because going into the water was a no-no in the, uh, the European games. See there, train track, goes into a tunnel, but I don't know if that's a shortcut or if it's just there for aesthetic purposes, but... But yeah, as I was saying, going into the water in the European version, of course, that was game over. And you didn't score any points whatsoever, but no, a lot easier in this game. You don't get any game overs or anything like that. It's just pop you back onto the track and away you go. So two wins out of two so far. 20, 10, 10, 5, 5, and 2. Everyone is fairly close. And Oregon track number one. Oregon, Oregon. However you... Pronounce it, well, of course, it's Oregon, but dialect, regional dialects, they uh, say it differently, I guess. I don't know. And here we go for the UK stages. Even though on the thumbnail on the loading screen, it showed like mountains and snow. I don't see any snow. red van trying to get in my way and cracking my windscreen or my back window. I wonder if we'll be able to pull away on this one. 0.2 of a mile already so yeah it looks like it. Look at the deformations of the scenery. Just popping in. Popping in, disappearing, deforming. All that lovely stuff. I think the best thing that they ever did on this stage in the American version, of course, is uh, get rid of that stupid, horrible, bloody fighter jet. I used to fly around all over the place. They've taken that away on this one. It made a really weird noise. It was like a... I don't know, it sounded like a bulldozer of some description. It certainly didn't sound like a fighter jet. Okay, after one lap, we are almost a mile ahead already. God knows what they're doing. Yeah, there we go, a mile. So this could potentially be the uh, largest gap that we've won a race. I think the biggest so far was 1.5 or 1.4 miles uh, during one of the arcade races, but... Well, we're up to that already, 1.3 miles, 1.4. We might even get up to two mile distance. Lost a little bit of time. One thing I've never done on this game, whether it be this one or Max Power Racing, is lap any opponents. 
of course it's easier i guess on max power because if the you know if there is a water feature then the ai can fall into that and retire from the race so i guess that's class as lapping them but not quite because they're just removed entirely from the map so um i don't think it's gonna happen obviously these maps are way too big but yeah to lap an opponent i don't think well no i've never lapsed anyone on these games would be nice. We're already up to 1.6 miles. 1.7. Oh, stop grinding the wall. That's another thing as well. With the floatiness of the physics, the, the car slides. You try and correct it, but it just carries on going in the exact same direction. And if you're uh, rubbing against a wall, or a barrier, or anything like that, the car sticks to it. You cannot remove the car from the wall. Just a major inconvenience. I'll go on the top path this time. And there we go. So we win by one and a half miles or thereabouts. 40483. <laughs> I don't know what my truck was doing then, just grinding off into the distance. Oh, well, there we go. Three down, two to go for the amateur division. I don't know why they call this one Hot Rod because it's certainly not Hot Rods. And race number four then, uh, Colorado track number one, this is of course Norway. So this would be fun. And of course a lovely beautiful skybox as always. Right, this one shouldn't be too difficult, in theory. Um, the first track, anyway, is usually straightforward. At least these uh, roadways have a bit of grip to them. They're not covered in snow, unlike stage three. Again, that snow is just there for aesthetics. It doesn't actually change the way the car handles as such. Because whether you're on a complete normal tarmac road or it's covered in snow, the car still handles like garbage anyway because of the floaty physics of you Technics games. Which pretty much, they all feel like you're driving on snow and ice anyway. Even like on Total Driving when you're in the, the sand dunes in Egypt, you still had that floatiness where it felt like the car was driving on ice. Something they never really learnt how to fix. Like I said before, I mean, it's still present in Le Mans 24 Hours, but not to such an extent as it is in this game. Um, it, is, it is more controllable in Le Mans 24. And that one's one of my favourite games anyway. Not the biggest of leads. Only half a mile. Lap 2. Ooh, again with the slidiness, gotta move on. <laughs> My car looks like he's raising his eyebrow. So like one eye closed, one eye up. Why saying, yeah, I see what you're doing. Sorry, I'm having too much fun looking at the uh, the face my truck is pulling and looking where I'm going. 
Yeah, it does look a little bit nonplussed, I must admit. That's a chalet sliding around corners. With the gorgeous lag, as always. Not really pulling a huge margin on this one, only 0.3 of a mile. Um, but I suppose we have been sliding around and crashing and... I was uh, looking at the face of my truck, so that's to be expected. Don't like the fact that some of the, the, the joinings of this circuit, they're not really stitched together that well. You've got like, little white blobs here and there. Where the track hasn't been joined properly. Oh, we pulled out a, a, a point eight of a mile lead. Where the hell did that come from? I haven't really been doing anything different. Uh, suddenly, we've almost got a mile lead. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Maybe we're just uh, far enough ahead away from the rubber banding effect. Now, there is a game I uh, played recently um, called Nash Racing. And I will be doing a, a one-off of that game, um, talking about the floaty physics or the, uh, the slidey physics, like you're on ice. That game in itself would be more akin to an ice racing simulation. Um, it's not. Obviously, it's it's about supercars and this that, and the other. There's no real premise to the game. It is literally a, a tech demo um, with a few assets thrown in here, there, and everywhere. Uh, the races have no meaning behind them at all. Um, you cannot lose the races because the AI spin pretty much on straightaways. That's how slidey it is. Um, the cars have no grip. Uh, there's a lot of bugs, um, and this, that, and the other, and it is a hilarious game just because of how bad it is. And, uh, I will be doing a one-off of that in the near future. But of course, that's another race done. And we don't have to impart a name, we've only done it the once so far. 40 to 20, 20, 11, 8, and 5, so we've won this championship. Only one race to go. And we're in SoCal for uh, the last race. Or uh, Monaco, as it is known. Lovely job. This one should be over easily. And very quickly as well, because this is quite a short track. Now that was me overcorrecting the slidiness of the car because it was sliding to the left. Tried to correct and yeah, there you go. Ended up going straight into the wall. Again, I'm not doing very well on this one at all. But uh, it does help when you haven't got something in your eye which is stinging like a swine and uh, making your eyes water. So 
I can't see where I'm bloody going. Uh, as you can see, the whole crew of misfits are uh, just ahead, so winning this race shouldn't be too difficult. And they're all crashing in the tunnel, which is again they did before, to my uh, utter amusement. So second place is leading by point two. In fact, there he is. The uh, lovely bread van. And again, why did the car just slide suddenly? Right, this time, don't go into the center of the bloody roadway, you dweeb. Get your backside back here, please. Oh, and there's a leader as well. Fantastic. Okay. Two birds with one stone. I can get past a bread van. And then this dweeb shouldn't be able to navigate the tunnel that well, so we'll probably scrape up the side and crash. Oh, he didn't. Okay. He's learning. I should be able to squeeze past. Before the start-finish line. There we go. Don't slide it this time. I love the reflections on the water of the boat as well. It's just literally a second boat rendered underneath. It's bloody terrible. And there we go. You see, you're already a 0.4 of a mile advantage. We've literally only just taken the lead. And there we go, championship wrapped up, we win every single race, we get a maximum of 50 points and crash a truck at the end. Lovely. Cool. So that is that one done, the uh, 4x4 amateur, no not the 4x4 amateur, the hot rod amateur. Uh, again, there's no hot rods in this game, so I don't know why they call it that. But anyway, 50 points, 26, 24, 12, 10 and 8, so it's fairly, you know, close at the end. And there we go. Congratulations, you are the Hot Rod Amateur Champion. Thank you very much. So that means we only got one championship left to do, which is, of course, the Hot Rod Pro. But we will do that next time for the series finale. So uh, I'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I'll see you for the finale of the series uh, next time. So take care, stay safe, and bye for now.